A groundbreaking new study has just ripped the veil off what may be one of the most alarming scientific cover-ups in recent memory. For decades, the true threat posed by the Cascadia subduction zone, a colossal fault line stretching from Northern California to British Columbia, has been quietly downplayed in public messaging. But recent findings suggest the danger is not just real, it's closer and more devastating than most have dared to imagine. Beneath the quiet beauty of the Pacific Northwest lies a geological force building in silence. This isn't some distant theoretical risk, it's a looming inevitability. Scientists now confirm that a massive rupture along this fault is overdue and guaranteed. When it happens, it won't just rattle the West Coast, it will unleash a chain reaction of destruction with the power to permanently reshape entire cities. The odds are sobering. There's a 10% to 30% chance of a full margin rupture occurring within the next 50 years. That statistic might seem manageable until you grasp what it represents, a magnitude 9 or higher earthquake that could shake violently for up to five minutes, launching a towering tsunami that may reach 100 feet and triggering an almost immediate drop in land elevation along the coast by as much as 6.5 feet. In a matter of minutes, Neighbourhoods could be drowned, infrastructures obliterated, and landscapes altered beyond recognition. These aren't speculative claims. The geological record offers chilling proof. By extracting sediment cores from coastal marshes, scientists have uncovered unmistakable layers of past devastation. These quakes don't happen randomly. They follow a grim rhythm, striking every 300 to 600 years on average. The last occurred on January 26, 1700, more than 325 years ago. That puts us squarely within the danger zone, and each passing day increases the likelihood that the next one is near. The environment itself bears witness. Lining the coastal lowlands are ghost forests, once thriving stands of cedar trees now lifeless, their roots submerged in salt water. They serve as haunting reminders of past land collapses caused by previous megathrust quakes. These trees didn't die slowly. They were drowned suddenly when the ground beneath them sank without warning. Even human memory retains the scars. Indigenous communities across the region have passed down vivid oral histories describing ground that shook violently, land that vanished beneath the sea, and waves that consumed entire villages. These aren't just metaphors or legends. They're eyewitness accounts, validated by modern geological evidence. One Yurok narrative recalls, the earth would quake and quake and then the water would rise. Today, we understand that this wasn't a myth, it was a memory of Cascadia's last great upheaval. What makes the situation so dangerous now is that the fault line isn't quietly releasing pressure through smaller quakes, it's locked. The Juan de Fuca plate is currently jammed beneath the North American plate, unable to move. This has created a massive build-up of tectonic stress, an invisible tension accumulating year after year, mile after mile. When it finally gives way, the result will be explosive. Modern technology has allowed scientists to observe this tension more precisely than ever before. GPS monitoring stations along the coast reveal that the land is being squeezed eastward by roughly 40 millimetres per year. It's a slow but relentless compression, like pulling back the string of a bow. The longer it holds, the more energy it stores, and the more catastrophic the release will be when the fault finally slips. Despite this mounting evidence, public awareness remains dangerously low. Why? Some researchers and emergency planners believe the threat has been underplayed to avoid widespread panic or to preserve real estate values in vulnerable coastal regions, but this new study makes clear that silence is no longer an option. The danger is real. The timeline is shrinking and preparation is falling behind. Most people are unaware that the tectonic stress accumulating beneath the Pacific Northwest is not evenly distributed. Advanced monitoring through seafloor pressure sensors has revealed concentrated zones of strain, known as locked patches, along the fault line. These areas are under intense pressure and are expected to unleash the most devastating ground motion when the fault finally gives way. 
Alarmingly, one of these high-risk zones lies just offshore from densely populated communities. The most unsettling findings come not from dry land, but from deep beneath the ocean. Geological surveys have uncovered massive underwater landslide deposits, remnants of colossal submarine collapses that could only have been triggered by past Cascadia megaquakes. The magnitude of these ancient slides hints at seismic power far beyond what the region's current infrastructure can handle. Imagine for a moment how you might change the course of your life if you knew a disaster of unprecedented scale was not just possible, but inevitable. That's a question many geologists in the region have already answered. Some have relocated their families inland or to higher ground, quietly seeking refuge from areas vulnerable to a tsunami's wrath. Time is not on our side. With every passing day, the likelihood increases for an event that will transform the landscape and life in the Pacific Northwest. Agencies like the US Geological Survey, FEMA, and state emergency teams no longer debate whether the Cascadia rupture will occur. They're planning for when. Forecasts suggest over 13,000 lives could be lost with economic losses exceeding $32 billion. And many experts believe these numbers understate the full impact. When this fault line finally snaps, the transformation will be sudden and irreversible. Centuries-old coastal communities could be obliterated in moments. Infrastructure meant to endure for generations, roads, bridges, power grids could crumble in an instant. Unlike storms or wildfires that give us time to prepare, this disaster will arrive unannounced, tearing through the region without warning and without mercy. The rupture of the Cascadia subduction zone will not be a single catastrophe. It will set off a deadly chain of events, each more destructive than the last. First will come the quake, a seismic assault lasting not seconds but minutes. While California quakes typically rattle the ground for less than half a minute, Cascadia's megathrust could unleash five relentless minutes of violent shaking. Buildings will sway dangerously, bridges may fall, underground utilities will rupture and the energy released could exceed 30 times that of California's worst recorded earthquake. Cities like Seattle and Portland will feel skyscrapers rock like metronomes, their structural limits pushed to extremes. Many older structures, especially the unreinforced masonry buildings that still dominate many towns, won't last through the first minute. Landslides will cut off mountain passes, stranding coastal communities without access to vital aid. Yet the shaking is only the opening chapter. The true horror will follow swiftly in the form of a massive tsunami. As the sea floor jerks upward during the rupture, it will send towering waves hurtling toward the shore at speeds rivaling jet planes. In the case of a Cascadia subduction zone rupture, the tsunami it unleashes won't offer the luxury of time. Unlike tsunamis generated far offshore, which can be tracked for hours before landfall, this one will arrive within just 15 to 30 minutes after the ground stops trembling. It won't resemble a typical storm surge. These waves could tower up to 100 feet, more than the height of a 10-story building, and they'll surge inland with immense and unrelenting force. Carving through river valleys and low-lying terrain, the water will obliterate nearly everything in its path. Structures that manage to withstand the earthquake's violence will likely be no match for the ensuing deluge. Now imagine, in the span of a single night, a once thriving coastal region rendered uninhabitable, its communities swept away, its roads erased, its people displaced. The aftermath would resemble the fallout of a humanitarian crisis, displacing hundreds of thousands, possibly creating a sudden class of environmental refugees. What does it mean for a society to lose part of its coastline, not gradually over centuries, but suddenly and irreversibly? Yet the true enduring transformation of the Pacific Northwest will come not from the shaking or the waves, but from what follows beneath the surface, literally. Scientists refer to this as co-seismic subsidence. It's a process that occurs during the rupture of the fault, where large sections of the coastline abruptly drop in elevation. Recent research, led by Dr. Tina Dura at Virginia Tech, shows that coastal land could instantly sink by up to 6.5 feet. This change doesn't unfold over years, it happens in minutes, as the immense pressure between tectonic plates is released, thrusting the ocean floor upward 
while the edge of the continent falls. The consequences are permanent. Places that were once safely above sea level will be inundated and lost to the sea. Government flood maps, already designed with extreme caution, will be outdated in an instant, with the 100-year floodplain expanding by more than 100 square miles. Vital transportation corridors, including evacuation routes, may be submerged, making it nearly impossible for rescue and relief operations to reach the hardest-hit zones. What makes this event uniquely catastrophic is the way each element amplifies the next. Buildings battered but standing after the quake may find themselves isolated on new shorelines or marooned in water. Roadways blocked by rubble won't just need to be cleared, they'll need to be rebuilt elsewhere. In some places, isolation will stretch for weeks or even months. And then there's the looming factor of climate change. Sea levels along the Pacific coast have already risen by nearly eight inches over the last century, with projections suggesting an additional four to six feet by the end of this one. Combine this gradual rise with the sudden drop from subsidence, and many communities face a twofold loss, one immediate, the other inevitable. To grasp the magnitude of what's at stake, one might look to past disasters for reference. Japan's 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami inflicted unprecedented damage, totaling hundreds of billions of dollars. Yet Japan had heavily invested in preparation, coastal defences, reinforced infrastructure, and extensive public training. The Pacific Northwest, by contrast, remains vastly underprepared. Another comparison might be Hurricane Katrina, which inundated most of New Orleans, but there the waters eventually receded. In a post-Cascadia world, many flooded areas may remain beneath the waves for good. This isn't the script of a speculative thriller. It's the projection of geologists, seismologists, and emergency planners based on decades of rigorous study. The Pacific Northwest sits on a ticking fault line, and when it moves it will unleash a chain of devastation without precedent in North American history, one that reshapes not only landscapes but lives. When the long-feared Cascadia earthquake strikes, over 15 million people across Washington, Oregon, Northern California, and British Columbia will awaken to a world that feels unrecognizable. For survivors, the true extent of the disaster will unfold slowly as morning light reveals a shattered environment. Communication systems will be among the first casualties. Cell towers will crumple, fiber lines will snap under landslides, and power substations will be disabled by shifting liquefied ground, plunging millions into sudden silence. In a world dependent on instant connectivity, the inability to reach family or receive critical updates will provoke a deep collective panic. Smartphones, once essential, will become useless relics within moments of the quake. Lifelines that took generations to construct will collapse in a single day. Key ports like Seattle, Tacoma, Portland and Vancouver, through which more than $70 billion in trade flows annually, will be ravaged by seismic waves and engulfed by tsunamis, some of their docks permanently submerged. These ports are vital, not just locally, but internationally and their loss will spark immediate supply chain breakdowns across North America. Roadways will be torn apart, leaving cities and towns dangerously disconnected. Interstate 5, the economic artery of the West Coast, is lined with vulnerable bridges and unstable ground, many of which are expected to fail catastrophically. Along the coast, Highway 101 will be fragmented by landslides, crumbled bridges and sunken terrain, severing evacuation routes. Entire communities will become isolated in ways unseen in modern U.S. history, marooned by flooded valleys and impassable debris. With airfields crushed and ports unusable, many towns may endure weeks or months without significant assistance. In the worst-hit areas, the wait could stretch into a year, demanding a level of self-reliance most no longer possess. Energy systems will be equally devastated. The Northwest's power grid, spanning more than 15,000 miles across volatile terrain, will be torn apart, plunging millions into prolonged blackouts. Fuel distribution will halt as pipelines rupture and refineries flood, making every aspect of recovery from transport to hospital care markedly harder. Without electricity or fuel, survival becomes a struggle against time. The most dire threat may emerge not from fire or collapse, but thirst. 
Water treatment plants near rivers and coastlines will be shattered by the quake or drowned by seawater. Aged water mains will break by the thousands. In Oregon, experts warn some areas could be without potable water for up to three years. Without access to clean water, even the most resilient urban centres will empty within days. The economic fallout will not stop at the Pacific's edge. With the Cascadia Corridor generating more than $1.5 trillion annually, its abrupt paralysis will ripple through global markets. Panic in financial sectors, fractured supply networks and widespread insurance turmoil will follow. While early estimates place damages at $32 billion, the cascading effects could push costs into the hundreds of billions or more. Some forecasts suggest this could become the first natural disaster in U.S. history to inflict a trillion-dollar toll. What makes this event especially haunting is its finality. Many coastal zones will not recover. Sinking land will be permanently lost to the sea, salt water will poison freshwater reserves, productive farmland will dissolve into unworkable swampland. Centuries-old towns may simply vanish from the map, erased not just physically but culturally. And yet, despite the certainty of this looming disaster, preparation lags dangerously behind. Fuel reserves are sparse, water stores are inadequate. Only in recent years have building codes begun addressing the unique duration of Cascadia's seismic shaking. Public awareness remains alarmingly low, with many residents unaware of the risk or unprepared for its consequences. The science is clear, the clock is ticking, but the region for now stands vulnerably still. The path to recovery will stretch across generations, not just a few years. Rebuilding won't simply mean restoring what was lost. It will require reimagining entire landscapes reshaped by nature's force. Roads must be redirected around newly carved bays, water infrastructure re-engineered from the ground up, and communities potentially relocated far from their original homes. Even our maps will change, with once familiar coastlines giving way to new estuaries and inlets in places where towns used to thrive. This is not a speculative scenario, it's a looming reality. The Cascadia subduction zone poses the most significant natural hazard threat to North America today. Geological records leave no room for doubt. The strain along the fault continues to mount, and when it finally gives way, whether tomorrow or decades from now, it will transform millions of lives in an instant. What hangs in the balance is not the inevitability of the event, but how ready we'll be when it comes. The science is unambiguous, the urgency is real, yet the window for meaningful action is closing. Ignoring this warning doesn't just invite disaster, it turns a natural phenomenon into a failure of foresight and preparation, a tragedy that could have been mitigated. If this message has deepened your understanding of what's at stake, consider sharing it. Spreading awareness is one small step toward the readiness we so desperately need.